Hello, this is Rowan and today we have Robbie reading of Tasty Cakes and Flying Under the Radar by Techno Trash Can on Fiction Press. This is a short suspense story about losing everything and trying to disappear. So, without further ado, let's begin. It was nearly 2 a.m. Overhead were the soft remnants of clouds that never really came to be, drifting past the moon aimlessly. Every minute or so, a single car would drive past the empty gas station and kick up tumbleweeds of old soda cans and plastic bags. The wind tossed garbage into the air like confetti, raining down on a one-man parade by the name of Travis Carter. He dug his hands deep into the pockets of his trench coat, the color of smoke, fumbled for his wallet, and counted out what meager cash he had on hand. He ended up with $9.83 and blew half of it on two boxes of Tasty Cakes from the 24-hour Wawa convenience store. They wouldn't have them where he was headed. Back outside the store, Travis opened his wallet to slip his change inside. He had shredded his driver's license before leaving the apartment, and now the only thing remaining in the wallet was what little money he had with him, a credit card, and a crinkled, wallet-sized school picture of a little boy. Travis stuffed his change into the wallet and quickly stuck it back in his pocket. There was nothing left for him in Philadelphia. Travis wanted nothing more than to just disappear. Travis withdrew a hundred dollars from his savings account and hailed a taxi. He climbed into the back of the cab and shut the door, holding the bill tightly in his pocket. Where to? the driver asked in a gruff voice. He had slicked back hair and uneven stubble, and in the rearview mirror one could clearly see that one of his eyes was glazed over. As far away from here as possible, was Travis's answer. The driver turned his head. Where to? He snapped again, vitriol practically dripping from his tongue. Travis pulled out the hundred dollar bill and slammed it down on the console. Is that sufficient? He demanded to know. Take me as far away from here as this will get me. The driver stared in shock for a moment at the money before snatching it up and grumbling in corroboration. He put the car in drive and hit the gas pedal, and the engine sputtered before roaring to life. The city sped by as the taxi headed west as though running from daylight. Travis found himself staring despondently out the window, drinking in the almost palpable silence that flooded the back of the taxi cab. As the skyscrapers waved farewell and gave way to empty highway, he tightened his grip on the plastic grocery bag in his lap, feeling as though something in him were beginning to tear at the seams. And perhaps it was, as the helpless feeling of being unable to save someone you love would do that to a person. Could one simply disappear, or would you have to consider the invisible ties tethering you to the earth? Did a person exist simply in name, or did one's purpose stretch beyond the capabilities of our minds to understand it? Did it matter either way? In his mind's eye, he could see it vividly. It had been two months since the morning he woke up to find his five-year-old son gone without a trace. The only evidence left behind was the wide-open window and a single set of muddy footprints stretching from the window sill to the side of his son's bed. There were few things worse than finding your child snatched out from under your nose, Travis decided. And among them were finding out the cops were no longer looking, and perhaps finding out that they didn't really care. In the dark of night, he could barely differentiate between what had happened and what was only a dream. Travis opened his eyes when he felt someone shaking him roughly by the shoulder. He hadn't even realized he'd fallen asleep. But when he awoke, the sun was up, and he was being stared in the face by the taxi driver with the glazed-over eye. Unless you've got more cash on you, this is the end of the line, the man grumbled irritably. He took Travis's tired expression as a no and dragged him out of the car and onto the sidewalk allowing the boxes of peanut butter cakes to land on his chest. Then he drove away, and Travis laughed bitterly at the notion of the man going back to an everyday existence after driving countless miles with an anonymous drifter in the back of his car. He rose to his feet, coughing and sputtering in the gasoline fumes that spewed out of the tailpipe of the rapidly disappearing car. He scanned his surroundings for a street sign or anything that would reveal his location. Finding nothing... Travis walked further down the road. The sidewalk was lit dimly by flickering street lamps casting an eerie glow across the unfamiliar city. Travis walked for a couple of blocks before a loud scream rang out. For a moment he thought about running in the opposite direction, 
but the thought of his son propelled him forward against his will. Travis knew, deep in his heart, that he would be unable to turn his back on someone in danger any longer. Arriving on the scene, Travis scrambled for something to use for self-defense. He found a discarded length of dirty metal pipe lying in a junk nearby and picked it up, clutching it tightly in pursuit of the masked man rushing out of a nearby store with what appeared to be a sack of money in his fist. Travis, without so much as thinking, swung his metal pipe at the back of the criminal's neck. The man toppled into a heap on the sidewalk, and after a few minutes of silence, Travis realized he was dead. He couldn't help the flutter of panic in his chest at the thought of having been responsible for someone's death. Hey, put down your weapon, he heard a voice behind him shout, accompanied by the thunder of footsteps running in his direction. Travis's fight-or-flight instincts took hold and he took off down an alleyway, running as far as his legs would take him for what felt like an hour before taking refuge underneath an overpass above a grimy creek. When the cops never showed up, Travis allowed his rapidly beating heart to relax in his ribcage, and he was still having a hard time believing he had done what he did. A man was dead at his hand, and although the man was a criminal, taking the law into his own hands like that was a criminal offense as well. But come the next night, Travis found himself unable to stop the fire burning deep inside him, as if fighting crime in this unknown city could somehow avenge the loss of his son. Over the course of three days, Travis had put an end to at least six crimes, and he was certain he'd had a hand in at least three deaths. He didn't know where the sudden burning feeling came from, as just a few days before he had only wanted to disappear, but he suspected something had changed on that taxi ride. A change of heart, perhaps, or maybe something in him was irreparably broken and had sent him on this path of chaotic good. This is a two-part story, so please check back tomorrow for the second part. Please remember to like and subscribe to us and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye for now.